Welcome to the course on computer design of electrical machines. We will have a lecture 11 today on design of DC machine part 3. So, with the we we'll like to have with the outline of presentation for today lecture, love to talk about palm magnet brushed DC motor, the starting form application and design. Then we will talk about complete design example of DC machine uh, with an, an article example and we will talk about design workflow with the DC motor design. Then we will go of course computer design of DC motor with analysis approach as well as synthesis approach and then we will go of course of design, optimum design of DC machine then followed by tutorial exercise and references. So, coming to first palm magnet brushed DC motors, the palm magnet brushed DC motors are I mean virtually you can call it in comparison to the machines with electromagnetic devices so with the following advantage. There are no excitation losses which means a substance will increase in efficiency and higher power density kilowatt per kg and high torque density in, numer in Newton meter per kg then when using the electromagnetic excitation. So, it provides a better dynamic performance than the motors with electromagnetic excitation having a higher flux density in their gap and it of course have a very simplified construction and require minimum maintenance and of course reduction in prices in some of the type of this palm net brush DC machine. So, this is the typical construction of you can call it palm net brush DC motor. It has a different part with palm net brush DC motor as you can see the typically the kind of uh, rotor coil of course you can call it armature winding then straight palm net as a loop of ma magnet then the brush is soft commutator and then palm magnet with the straight winding straight magnetic core and palm magnet rotor with the retaining sleeve as well as soft. Then you can see how this is the part of stator of the two pole motor you can just see with the palm magnet. So, two pole stator with segment palm magnets and, and the rotor with segment uh, then steel housing then third limited five magnetic rotor core then rotor armature winding the rotor winding connections and commuted and then the drive shaft like as it is shown this diagram with the photograph like. Well, these are the of course, computer segments as you can see here uh, typically with the plastic with mica isolation and mica extra commutator with segment pressed in a plastic cylinder like for of course, small rating motors like. Then of course, carbon graphite brushes for a small DC machine, pair of brushes with a special spring, a spiral spring and single brush with a spiral spring and pair of the brushes with flat spring. Then the punctured brush is motor with disc type of moving coil rotor and foil winding and very special kind of construction you can call it in axial field construction with the moving coil disc type of printed winding, perm magnet brush cylindrical ferromagnetic housing as well as ferromagnetic cover like. Uh, well, so there is a of course, this kind of machine have a very special kind of winding moving coil coalesce armature winding of chromatic type to maximum and sections in of course, Switzerland. So, winding loop arrangement of layers and complete cylindrical aromatic winding and complete rotor. Then of course, you have a pungle brush more DC motor parts like as you can see with the animation on the left side which have a typically end caps then you have a rotor commutator uh, winding axle and then the stator with the bound net brush brushing as you can see on other side of the diagram. So, you have a different palm net brush palm net brushless and palm net stepper motor. So, you can we are at the moment discussing palm net brush DC motor where you have end cap, then you have a rotor with the commutator as well as armature winding with the axle and then you have a stator magnets the bushing. Of course, the middle diagram is palm net brushless DC motor which are used probably for many applications apart from that we have a palm net brush type stepper motor, brushless stepper motor. So, as you can see palm net brush DC motor armature is on the rotor with the commuter and brushes arrangement as well as the magnets are on stator which are stationary like and you can see is a brushless how brushless DC motor like we will talk a little later as well as the stepper motor operation. Now, coming to applications of palm net brush DC motors I mean you can see small motor for toys with the arrangement because these all the toys need the high torque, but the motor is designed for very high speed with less torque because the size at high speed the size of the motor is quite small. You will find plenty of kind of toys in which this hurt is the typically the motor of low voltage 6 volt, 12 volt, 8, 9 volt order of that and the motor runs high speed and you can see many stages of the gear which increases the torque and reduces the speed for the toy compatible I mean like 
ऑफ कोर्स मेजोरिटी ऑफ देम आर विद द प्लास्टिक गियर्स अरेंजमेंट लाइक एंड ऑफ कोर्स द ऑगुलरी मोटर्स फॉर ऑटोमोबाइल यूज फॉर प्लंटी ऑफ एप्लीकेशन स्टार्टिंग फॉर्म आई मीन पैसेंजर ऑक्यूपेंट रिडक्शन सीट देन यू हैव ए रोटर स्टेटर असम्बली देन इलेक्ट्रिक पावर असिस्टेड स्टेयरिंग एंड आई मीन लाइक सीट अरेंजमेंट आई मीन तो प्लंटी ऑफ मोटर्स आर फॉर्मिंग ब्रश मोटर आर यूज विद द टिपिकली विद द गियर्स एंड ऑल दैट लाइक तो दीज आर द टिपिकल यू कैन से ऑक्जिलरी पार्मिनेट ब्रश डी सी मोटर विच आर यूज इन ऑटोमोबाइल स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम विंड विंडशील्ड वाइपर्स दैन स्टिंग हेडिंग हेडलाइट्स दैन रेडिएटर फैंस रेडिएटर शटर्स डोर लॉक ऑयल पम्प फ्यूल पम्प वाटर पम्प विंडशील्ड वाटर पम्प पावर स्टेरिंग दैन कंप्रेसर मिरर एक्स वाई होल्डिंग साइड मिरर्स पावर स्लाइडिंग विंडो राइड स्टेबलाइजेशन टेलर्ड हिट रिट्रैक्ट हैच लिफ्ट सन रूफ पावर सीट्स एंड वेंटिलेटिंग सीट्स तो सो मेनी यू कैन कॉल इट द अपलायसेज ऑगुलरी आई मीन नीड्स द ऑगुलरी मोटर्स इन सिंपल ऑटोमोबाइल एप्लीकेशन तो यू कैन सी हाउ मेनी पर्मनेंट ब्रश डी सी मोटर्स आर यूज इन एन एक सिंपल कार लाइक फॉर सॉन्ग देन ऑफकोर्स यू कैन से टिपिकली द वाइब्रेशन मोटर्स फॉर सेल फोन आई मीन दैट्स ऑल्सो पर्मनेंट ब्रश डी सी मोटर्स एज यू कैन सी द कंस्ट्रक्शन हेयर डिटेल विद द ओपन डायग्राम्स ऑल्सो देन यू हैव ए वाइब्रेशन मोटर I mean the other parts. How it is really assembled within the, along with the battery, this kind of arrangement with. Then of course for robotics vehicles for Mars mission. I mean how really the motors is run typically. So basically it's a permanent brush DC motor because the power is by battery and you want very simple control with that. So we use permanent brush DC motor. Of course with the solar panel as you can see on the side, the main source of the power is the solar panel. then of course the medical and health equipment for the very high torque uh, typically including the wheelchair and the different kind of arrangement of the seat movement as well as the medical equipment like um, where we use the pungnet brush dc motors like with a very high torque and very low speed of course motor are designed for high speed with the gear arrangement for these application also then of course lena actuator with the ball screw as you can see the motor how it is really converting the this into linear motion with the help of typically the ball and a screw arrangement like um then the cordless power tools as you can see many power tools like saw then different kind of i mean requirement presses all those things which require for really the pound brush in which are operated from the battery like then the sports equipment like a fitness in fitness club of course they also have a movement like common I mean, so all these are with the permanent brush dc motor because they provide very linear torque speed characteristic as a servo motor then you have of course so these are some application now coming to the design of permanent brush dc motors so now coming for the main dimensions so we can define the terminal voltage is your e vacuum f plus i r a drop plus your del w r that's a brush drop so here it is e the voltage induced in the armature winding Called vacuum. If I is the armature current, R is the resistance of armature circuit, and delta B R is the brush voltage drop. The brush voltage drop approximately constant, and for carbon brushes, delta B R is around two volt like. So induced M F in the armature winding by the main flux pi G in the air gap is equal to n upon a into p phi p phi G into n, uh, or you can call it C E n into phi G. So where I need the number of armature conductor, a the number of pair. pairs of armature current parallel path and p the number of pole pairs and phi the air gap magnetic flux like produced by the magnet like mainly so electromagnetic torque developed in dc commutator motor is td equal to n upon a into p upon 2 pi into phi g ia or ct phi g into ia and where you can call it ct is equal to np upon 2 pi a or c upon 2 pi so ct is the torque constant and electromagnetic torque is proportional to the armature current and the the rotor you can call it armature linear surface speed or you can call it peripheral speed we define v equal to pi dn where n is in rph and d is the diameter in of the armature in meter and similarly the commuter linear speed also defined vc equal to pi dc into n and where dc is the outside the di outer diameter of the commuter periphery now coming to again the main dimensions considering the losses in the pound brush dc motor so electromagnetic power can be found out by p electromagnetic equal to e into ia that is p in minus ia square ra minus delta br into ia or equal to p out upon efficiency minus delta pa plus 
delta P V R. So according to experimental test, the armature winding and rust stop loss is delta P A plus delta B R is motor up to rate of one kilowatt R of average about two third of the losses. And thus the electromagnetic power for a small DC commuter motor is P L P electromagnetic is P out upon efficiency minus two by three P out. Into one minus efficiency upon eta, that becomes equal to one plus two eta upon three eta, p out. So this is coming to typically how we really get the all these kind of different distribution of losses. We give electrical power p input, that is I d u d, and of course it gets distributed for the iron armature copper losses, then brush contact drop, and then electromagnetic power p equal to T m omega, and out of that we have a arc losses. P R equal to pi A side omega upon two pi into E R and outward power P out equal to T U into omega and friction rate loss that is P F into T C into omega plus T F into omega square plus T V into omega cube and then magnetic losses that we call core loss P R n equal to M R n that is mass in bracket we got 4.85 A upon 60 B square by 1.5 plus 2.86 F B square divided by 601.5 square. That's eddy current, and you can call the hysteresis loss. It. So now coming to the typically pole piece. The pole piece is defined as the armature circumference pi d divided by the number of poles. That is equal to 2p. So tau equal to pi d upon 2p, and the pole piece can be expressed in terms of number of slots. Armature self pi ampere. So that is alpha equal to bp upon tau. That is typically taken as about equal to 0.55 to 0.75, and the ratio is called effective polar. Coefficient in which BP is the main pole to width like. Now coming to air gap flux density, the air gap flux density or the specific magnetic loading is here B G equal to pi G upon alpha I tau into L I or two P pi G divided by pi alpha I L I D where phi is the air gap flux magnetic flux produced by the power magnet. Now coming to for typically for cylindrical rotor DC motor, the electromagnetic internal power P L magnetic equal to into I A where the E vacuum of n upon a into p n pi g equal to c n pi g and i equal to two pi a d a upon a n. So electromagnetic power can be expressed p l magnetic equal to e i a equal to n upon a into p n pi g two pi a d a upon n, or you can call it like it is equal to n a upon p n l phi b g l i pi d upon two p two pi a d a upon n, or equal to l i. Pi square d square l i n b g into a, where you can call it the sigma. You can define a pa parameter p electromagnetic divided by d square l i into n or l i equal to l phi equal to pi square b g into a. So it's called I put coefficient is expressed in Newton per meter square or V a upon meter cube. So electromagnetic torque of a DC machine can be expressed with the aid of electric and magnetic loading. That's T equal to T d equal to p l meter electromagnetic divided by two pi n. Equal to L phi pi upon two d square L i b g into a. So now we can call it the calculation of main dimension with the steps to design the specification of the machine. Decide the output power p out and the efficiency and speed. And using a suitable value of b g and a i a, the d square L product is determined depending upon the pole uh, arc L and d can be discriminated or can be. Separated out or calculated the losses in the armature winding per surface area of rotor are delta P A upon pi d L I equal to one upon pi d L I into n L average upon delta sigma S A into one upon two A square into I A square or equal to L average J A upon sigma L I. So product J A uh, must not exceed certain percentage level approximately for motor up to ten kilowatt. The product J I A should be less than 12 into 10 power 10 ampere per meter cube. So now coming to typically the flow chart for design of this brush, brush motor. So we start with the input specification like voltage, current, speed, and pole number, and input design data. Then plug density, number of poles, efficiency commuter slot, armature diameter. Then calculate number of slots, num slot width. Select the type of winding. Is if low current, no. Then you have a lap winding, and if yes, then wave winding, and go to and B. So coming to A, number of parallel path for wave winding is two, and parallel path for normally similar to DC machine is equal to P. Then calculate the slot width and conductor diameter. If the conductor is less than ten millimeter square, yes. 
then go to the visual slots and if no go to parallel path with the on going to c then go to the c calculate the top bottom slot width minimum width slot pitch plug density and teeth and core dimension calculate the armature resistance what is drop calculate the commuter brush diameter then calculate brush contact loss friction loss calculate copper loss iron loss and loss in the armature then calculate efficiency then no load loss and full load value is the result satisfactory no go to start and if yes calculate yoke dimensions go for performance characteristic curve and fit the curve and analyze the result now coming to as a design practice of palm grid brush dc motor with the first example to find the main dimensions armature diameter in effective length of and pm length electric loading and magnetic loading of dc pm commutator motor of cylindrical construction with slotted rotor rated at p equal to p out equal to 40 watt v equal to 110 volt and n equal to 4000 rpm the palm magnets are made of hard ferrite of 28 by 26 the demagnetization curve of which is shown in the figure and the efficiency of the rated load should be not should be minimum at least of uh, 0.6 and the motor have the design for continuous duty so you can see the magnetization characteristic of ferrite hard ferrite magnet so now coming to the solution the electromagnetic power for continuous duty is equal to p electromagnetic 1 plus 2 eta upon 3 eta p out and putting the value it come 48.9 watt and r means current i equal to p out upon n eta v so keeping the value it come 0.61 ampere and like and then induced emf equal to pl mt upon ia so keeping the value it comes 80.2 volt then now coming to typically p out upon efficiency that comes typically a speed that comes 0 1 and watt per rpm that comes 10 into 10 power minus 3 watt per rpm and continuous duty for line current density usually taken a equal to 7500 ampere per meter and a gap plug density order of p is equal to 0.35 tesla the output coefficient expressed by this equation sigma p equal to alpha i pi a square b d into a putting value it comes 17.17358 v upon meter cube with the effective arc pole coefficient has been assumed alpha i equal to 0.67 means the pole arc of magnet is 67% of the pole pitch and armature diameter and effective length now li upon di taking a ratio 1 output coefficient sigma is p element pl of magnet divided by d square and then we can get d equal to under root uh, cube root p p like magnet sigma n putting the value it comes like your typically 0.0348 or equal to approximately 35 mm and the effective armature length li equal to di equal to also 35 mm now the hard ferrite 28 by 26 can produce a magnetic flux density not exceeding 0.2 tesla so to obtain 0.3 tesla the length of palm magnet lm should be greater than li so lm equal to li on bg into bu putting the value it comes 49 mm now coming to palm magnet brush dc motor design as a example sec 2 so coming to the question to a two pole 380 watt 180 volt 1950 rpm with efficiency of 84% dc brush motor with segmental palm magnet has a n equal to 920 armature conductor and armature circuit resistance is 5.84 the effective length of armature core is li equal to 0.064 meter and the armature diameter is d equal to 0.12 meter the effective pole arc is li equal to 0.75 the number of pole pair in armature path is li equal to 1 a equal to 1 and the brush stop delta br equal to 2 volt find the armature constant ke and torque constant kt the magnetic flux density flux and the air gap flux density bg the mechanical time constant tm and the speed at 40% of the normal voltage and the torque and armature action is neglected so coming to the solution the armature constant and torque constant can be calculated the armature current is i equal to p out upon v into eta so putting the value of it it comes to 2.51 ampere and the industrial mf equal to p minus i r minus delta br putting a value it comes 163.34 volt and the armature constant comes k equal to e eta upon n so it comes typically 5.026 volt second now the torque constant kt is k upon 2 pi so putting value it comes 0.8 newton meter per ampere and magnetic flux and air gap flux magnetic flux density comes kt equal to na n upon a p upon 2 pi phi 
and from this we can find out the air gap flux density pi equal to 2 pi n to k2 upon np putting value it comes 0 0.00546 weber now pole pitch is tau equal to pi d upon 2b so putting value it comes 0 0.1885 meter and we can find out now air gap flux density b is equal to phi upon l phi tau into li and putting value it comes 0 0.6 tesla now the mass of armature is m equal to 1.11 rho pi d square by 4 li putting value it comes approximately 6.37 kg so it has been assumed that the average mass of the armature is so equal to 8000 kg meter cube so and 10 percent of has been allowed for computer and shaft so moment of inertia of uh, armature is j equal to m into d square by 8 so it comes 0 0.01147 kg meter square now the speed at no load eta equal to v upon ke so keeping a value it comes to 149 rpm and starting current where e equal to 0 i equal to v minus delta v r and divided by r r a it comes 30.48 ampere and mechanical time constant tm e2 pi n 0 j upon kt into a ist so putting a value it comes 0 0.1 second the speed at 40 percent nominal voltage and nominal torque so speed torque eta equal to 1.506 v minus vbr minus 5.86 into td so putting a value i mean here it comes like typically your 11.03 or 662 rpm now coming to a permanent brush DC motor design pack example third uh, is the question three for the permanent brush DC motor armature diameter D is 53.8 millimeter slot tip diameter is 52.6 millimeter pole arc to pole pitch ratio is your 0 0.8875 number of poles is six and number of slot slot root diameter small d is 39.8 8 millimeter find the number of slots type of finding slot pitch conductor dimension computer dimension and blast design for the given motor so here all the dimensions which are given here is just repeated armature diameter 53.8 slot tip diameter 52.6 polar to pole pitch ratio 0 0.8875 number of pole 6 and slot rotor diameter 39.8 millimeter so now coming to typically for calculate the number of slots usually 12 12 volt machine slot uh, pitch is value lie between 5.5 to 6.5 millimeters so number of slot lie between pi d upon ss so keeping a value it comes 31 and pi d upon ss putting the value it comes approximately 25 so number of slots is taken as a odd number to avoid the effect of harmonics so number of slots here 25 27 and, and 29 these are the combinations so to reduce the flux transition the ratio of phi into s upon p integer plus minus 0.5 and for s 25 i mean this value we calculate it comes 3.69 which is approximately 4 s equal to the sum this value comes approximately again 4 and for s is 29 this phi into s upon pi it comes again 4.28 that is the approximately 4 so number of slots selected 25 now usually in case of low current application the winding assumed to be wave winding so for this application wave winding is used and armature winding equal to wave with the double layer winding double winding is used for achieving the higher torque so here the slot width calculation is solved with the slot uh, at total map pi d upon ss so it comes power 0.99 mm so now typically tooth width at slot root diameter should be at least 1.48 millimeter to avoid the loss due to saturation slot width comes 4.99 minus 1.2 that comes 0.79 millimeter for the now coming to conductor dimensions so lamination is used to avoid the sorting between the conductors and the core and thickness of lamination is 0.3 millimeter and space for conductor will slot the slot width minus into 2 into insulation thickness so it comes 3.79 minus 2 into 0.3 that comes 3.19 millimeter so now coming to the leaving the clearance is space of 0.54 millimeter for one is we arrive at conductor so dimension of conductor will be 2.65 millimeter and space for conductor thickness that is slot height minus 3 into insulation thickness that is comes 6.2 millimeter and leaving a clearance of space point 0 0.785 millimeter for one inch so we arrive at s is space for conductor thickness that is 5.4 millimeter and this is space is for two conductors since it is double layer winding so conductor thickness is typically 5.4 by 2 that is 2.7 millimeter now coming to commuter design commuter rise diameter is 
zero point eight three six d that comes to forty four millimeter, and armature bear diameter is thirty one. So that is a segment width plus mica separator. It's a pi d into armature bear diameter divided by number of slots. So thirty one into three point one four into divided by twenty five. It comes three point eight nine three millimeter. So mica width is taken as a point five six millimeter, and segment width taken three point eight nine minus point six three point three three. Millimeter and computer rise diameter is 44 millimeter and measure bed diameter is 31 millimeter and mic and width is 0.56 millimeter. So segment width is 3.33 millimeter. Now coming to brush design, the so maximum magnetic current density at lock condition in brush should not be greater than 5 ampere per millimeter square. So lock current is typically 900 million. Nine is since wave winding is used, the number of parallel paths are two. So carbon plus per brush 900 by 2450. And the taking the brush at two times the segment mic, so brush width is 3.45 into two, that is 6.7 minus seven. So this area is 7x in, into millimeter square. So current density current upon area 470 by 7x. So x comes 450 by 35, that is 13 millimeter. And height of the brush is 13 millimeter, and width of the brush is 7 millimeter. Now coming to as a design and complete design, this is an example as a case study as an article. Well, let's then. So coming to like a design as far as possible, a DC generator with the following specification: rated power 80 kilowatt, number of poles 4, voltage 250 volt, and RPM 900 RPM. So design for main dimensions armature and system. Assume suitable data required in design. Efficiency of the generator should not be should be 0.9, and the armature temperature rise should not should be within the specified limit. So now coming to the the solution main dimension of this generator frame. The main dimension is for Calculation of that rated out for 80 kilowatt and have typically speed is 900 by 60. That's a 15 RPS. And taking efficiency of 0.9, the power develop is P equal to P 2 plus eta upon theta. So it comes 85.92 kilowatt. And specific magnetic loading B equal to 0.5 Weber per meter square. And the specific electric loading that is small AC 34,000 ampere per meter square. The output coefficient C0 equal to C equal to pi square into putting the value this both the loading it comes one seventy point nine six and output equation can be P zero C D square eleven so okay, D square eleven putting a value it comes like typically eighty nine eighty five point nine two divided by two five six four point four and taking a square pole construction preferably for pole body so a square pole body means L upon top P is a B P upon top P so let's assume the pole R to pole P is ratio B P upon top P point six six and L upon top P point six six Or L equal to 0.6 pi d upon 4, so it comes to L equal to come 5.52 d, and putting the value in output equation, so it comes 0.52 d cube equal to 0.03, and d cube is a 0.005, so d comes 0.38, L comes 0.19 meter. Now, coming to diameter of armature is 0.38 meter, length of the core 0.19 meter. Peripheral speed BP is equal to pi d, and that comes for 17.8 mm, 8 meter per second. And pole P top P pi d upon P it comes by 0.29 meter. So for pole arc given BP upon T P equal to 0.66, so pole arc is BP is equal to that 0.66 into 0.29, it comes 0.19 meter. So core length is 0.19 meter, hence the one ventilating duct has to be provided. So let's take a width of ventral length of one centimeter. So the gross iron length is L equal to L minus N, N V into V V. So it comes, now L comes after putting value zero point one eight meter. Now iron length is L equal to K I, taking a striking factor K I equal to point nine. So it comes L I comes zero point one six meter. Now frequency of flux reversal F equal to P N upon by two. That comes thirty hertz. And thickness of lamination is preferred point three five millimeter. Now line current is your P into thousand divided by eta into B, so it comes 355.5 ampere, and taking a field current of 1.4 of line current, so I F equal to 0.9 ampere. Now considering the voltage drop, internal voltage drop 5%, so internal voltage drop comes 17.7 volt. So armature current is I equal to I L plus I F, that comes 260.4 ampere. Now generator is equal to thermal voltage minus plus voltage voltage drop because it's a generator, so keeping a value it comes 267.7 volt. Now coming to design of our armature winding. So since the armature current is less than 400, a simplex winding can be selected for this machine. So number of parallel path is two. The current per path is 360 by 0.4 by two. 
180.2 so then ij dig is 180.2 so usual flux per pole phi equal to b average top tp into l so it comes 0 0.028 weber and number of harmonic conductor j equal to e upon phi p phi n putting a value it comes like a 318.6 so rounding of equal to 318 now slot this should be between 2.5 3.5 centimeter so number of slot will be pi d upon slot pitch so giving the value it comes 34 to 47 number of slot so now number of slot per pole is s upon p that comes should be between 9 to 16 so in case of wave winding the number of slots will not be multiple of 2 so the number of slot will be an will not be an integer so with the pi equal to 0.66 the number of slot per pole always an integer of 39 to 43 so number of 280 equals per slot is 246 hence the four slot with qual side per slot is n equal to 4 with the two turns coil can be taken so the total number of slots is equal to s equal to 41 and total number coils is half u into s putting a value it comes 82 now number of armature conductor actually use it because of the constraint of integer z equal to 2 into 2 into 82 this becomes 328 so z i mean that's a con number of conductor comes 328 and number of conductor per slot nc equal to 328 by 41 it comes 8 and slot pitch comes pi d upon s putting a value it comes 0 0.029 0 0.029 meters now corrected value of flux per pole comes pi corrected 0 0.028 divided 318 by 28 0 0.027 weber and corrected b and a c are now b corrected is pi corrected by tau into l it comes 0.55 weber per meter square and AC comes IZ upon Z corrected by upon pi D it comes 49,668 ampere per meter. Now slot loading and C into IZ is 18 to 180.3 it comes 1441.6 ampere meter and its specific limit is 1500 so that is within the safe limit so coming to commuter diameter DC equal to 0.63 into 0 0.23 meter and commuter peripheral with pi d into c that is 0 0.72 meter and number of commuter segments equal to 150 so commuter piece is pi dc upon c that comes 4.8 into n power minus 3 meter so this is within the specified limit and current density armature winding 5.5 ampere per meter square so armature conductor cross section fc comes current in parallel part divided by sigma it comes 32.76 millimeter square a rectangular copper conductor size of 3 into 11 millimeter can be used so area of the conductor is given as 32.5 millimeter square now coming to slot size the width of the slot equal to bare conductor at 3 into 4 12 millimeter and conductor is 1.4 millimeter the slot insulation 2 into 1 that's 2.0 millimeter and slot width is your 15.4 millimeter the width of the slot is bs equal to 15.4 millimeter now coming to height of the slot so bare conductor layer is 2 into 11 that comes now 22.22 22 millimeter and conductor insulation 4 into 0 0.35 that is 1.4 millimeter and slot insulation 2 into 1 that 2 millimeter and separator of 1 millimeter they equal to 1 millimeter and stack height is 0.6 millimeter so adding all it comes 27 millimeter that becomes the height of the slot now width of width at the slot opening it comes 4 millimeter so total height of the slot comes 27 plus 4 that's 31 millimeter height of the slot h s equal to 30 mm so slot pitch is pi d upon s which is 29.1 mm now the flux density in the teeth at one third height from the narrow end that is slot you can call it slot pitch at the one third height is the pi in t minus 2 into 2 by 3 h s divided by 41 putting a value it comes 25.9 millimeter the width at the one third height it comes b t r by 3 that 24 5.9 minus 15 point that is pi d by 3 s sub minus b s 10.5 millimeter and flux density at one third narrow end is a BTR by P pi corrected into psi S L I into 0 0.0105 putting a value it comes 2.3 Weber per meter square. So this is slightly higher than the SPI 5 minutes. So the slot width will be increased to decrease the flux density in the tooth. So design in this particular problem is a continue with the flux density. So armature MF per pole is 80 CA 80 pi D upon 2A, it comes 74. 07 ampere and maximum flux density in the air gap is bm equal to b correct pi that comes 0.55 divided by 0.66 so it comes 0 
ये थ्री वेबर पर मीटर स्क्वायर तो लेट्स हैव गेट कर कॉन्ट्रेक्शन फैक्टर के इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट वन फाइव तो वी हैव ए टी दी ए टी सिगमा इक्वल टू एट हंड्रेड थाउजेंड बी हम के सी इंटू सिगमा तो इट कम्स पुटिंग अ वैल्यू टिपिकली फोर ए टी सिगमा कम्स फोर जीरो सेवन थ्री एम पी एर तो नाउ डेल्टा कम्स ए टी जी अपॉन एट थाउजेंड टिपिकली पुटिंग वैल्यू इट कम्स टिपिकली जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो फाइव थ्री मीटर और एयर गैप लेंथ कम्स टिपिकली फाइव पॉइंट थ्री मिली मीटर एज यू कैन सी टिपिकली इन द डायग्राम तो फ्लक्स इन द आर्मे से फाइव सी इक्वल टू फाइव फोर इज करेक्टेड बाई टू तो इट कम्स जीरो पॉइंट वन थ्री फाइव टिपिकली वेबर एंड एंड लेट्स फ्लक डेंसिटी कोर बी सी इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट टू फाइव तो फाइव डिवाइड बाई टू बी सी इंटू एस सी इंटू एल आई तो हाइट ऑफ द आर्मेचर कोर एस सी इक्वल टू फाइव करेक्टेड बाई डिवाइड बाई टू फाइव बी सी इंटू एल आई इट बिकम जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स सेवन मीटर एंड हाइट ऑफ द आर्मेचर कोर नाउ इट कम्स एस सी इक्वल टू सिक्सटी सेवन मिली मीटर नाउ इंटरल डायमीटर ऑफ आर्मेचर कोर डी आई इक्वल टू डी माइनस टू एच एस माइनस टू एस सी इन कीपिंग वैल्यू इट कम्स पॉइंट एटी फोर मिली मीटर रजिस्टेंस एंड वोल्टेड ऑफ आर्मेचर टिपिकली फॉर दैट वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट एल एम टी दैट ट्वेल्व प्लस टू पॉइंट थ्री टॉप ई प्लस इंटू फाइव इंटू एच एस तो इंटरनल लेंथ कम्स फूटिंग वैल्यू ऑल दीज इट कम्स वन पॉइंट वन नाइन मीटर रजिस्टेंस एट सेवेंटी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियर एल आर इक्वल टू रो एल एम टी बाई टू एफ सी फूटिंग वैल्यू इट कम्स फोर पॉइंट एट इंटू टेन पावर माइनस फोर इन होम एंड नाउ फॉर द आर्मेचर टिपिकली वे वाइनिंग तो आर रजिस्टेंस कम्स आर इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट टू जेड अपॉन टी रो एल एम टी पॉइंट टू एफ सी तो फूटिंग वैल्यू इट कम्स थ्री पॉइंट नाइन एन पावर माइनस टू होम एंड आई एड आर्मेचर वोट एड ऑफ कम्स आई आर ए फूटिंग वैल्यू इट कम्स फोर्टीन वोल्ड लाइक तो नाउ वेट ऑफ द कॉपर इन आर्मेचर कम्स एट थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड डेंसिटी And armature copper loss I S square it comes like typically five kilowatt. Now taking a leakage coefficient for pole one point one six, so flux density in pole body B P is one point four five tesla. So flux per pole body is five P to this leakage coefficient multiply the plug it comes zero point zero three one Weber and axial length of pole L P equal to L equal to point one nine meter. So five P equal to B P into B K I into L. So now the B Can be calculated by P upon B P K I into L. So putting a value from 129 millimeter. As you can see, B P typically the value of the B here. So selecting A T F L at full load 0.9 times A T A and field M F at full load A T F L equal to 0.9. Putting a value is come 6666 and selecting a depth of field winding D F equal to 40 mm. So space vector of K F equal to 0.75. So M F per meter height of the field winding is 10 to the power 4 under root Q F. F D F and putting value comes 4.58 into 10 power 4. So height of the field winding can be H F equal to 80 F L 10 power minus 100 root F D F. So it comes 0.14 meter and from this H P comes 0.17 meter. So flux in the yoke that leakage coefficient into 5 correct by 2 it comes 0.015 Weber and 5 Y equal to H Y L Y P Y. Taking B Y 1.5 Tesla. And L Y equal to L I equal to 0.16 meter. So height of the pole at Y comes 5 Y L Y B Y. Putting a value, it comes 62.5 millimeter. Now coming to outside diameter of yoke, D Y equal to 3 plus 2 sigma plus H P plus H Y. Putting a value, it comes D Y comes 0.854 meter. And ampere turns required for air gap maximum air gap length to be taking B M equal to 0.83. Tesla, so slot homing air gap ratio comes 15.4 divided by 3, it comes 2.9, and the Carter coefficient is 0.37. So gap contraction factor slot is minus slot is 0.37 bs, it comes 1.26. Uh, after putting the value of this, so ampere turns required for air gap is duct due to air gap is 10 by 0.53 1.88. So Carter coefficient for this ratio is 0.3. So again, contraction factor L upon L minus 0.3 into L V H B V. So it comes one. And the overall gap contraction comes into kg equal to 1.2 into 1. That's 1.2. And the overall gap contraction is kg equal to 1.2 into 1. 1.2. And ampere turns for air gap comes 8 kg into 800,000. Into putting all the value of 0.83 1.2 into 5.3 into 1 minus 6 comes 4,223 ampere. Now M for pole body taking a B P equal to 1.45 tesla. And ATP corresponding to BP from curves comes 900 per ampere meter square. 
now you can calculate the mf4 complete body by taking a linear let's say the linear length of magnetic flux path so atp is equal to small atp into hp putting a value it comes atp equal to 153 and for mf4 polio it comes atp by into small atp by into ly so ly by dy by, by p putting a value it comes 0.67 meter now taking by 1.5 tesla so small atp for magnetization characteristic comes uh, typically 1000 ampere per meter so a capital a y comes from multiplication of both it comes 670 ampere so now m4 teeth bt is a 2.3 tesla so i'm a small 80 for that material is come 17000 so i'm required for teeth is 80 into hd so putting value this it comes 527 ampere so now coming to m4 core as a length in core that's lc equal to pi d minus 2 hs into hc by 4 so it comes lc compounds 197 total mf report of course the flux density in the core is 1.2 tesla and uh, from the this flux density from going to material poverty small it comes 355 ampere per meter so total mf required 40 atc into lc that comes 68.9 ampere now mf for core is the total mf required is at totally it is 80 sigma plus atp plus ATY plus atd plus atc that comes 5641 ampere assuming the full load mf is 1.15 times no load mf so field mf required at full load will be this atfl equal to 1.15 into this value 5641 so atfl comes 6487 ampere now voltage across the center field winding is 250 volt with the 20 percent voltage is kept as reserve for hp regular so voltage across the center field is a ef equal to 0.85 by p so it comes 50 volt so mf4 is 12 load is 6487 so atfl is 6487 so from this now fill winding design comes height of the fill winding is 140 millimeter depth is 40 millimeter axial length of pole is 190 meter width of the pole is 190 millimeter and width of the pole body is 129 millimeter so now the length of main turn lmt equal to 2 lp ap plus tf that comes 700 millimeter or 0.718 meter now sectional area of field conductor is f f equal to atfl rho into lmt upon ef so f comes like putting a value uh, it comes like a person putting all value if it comes like 1.15 millimeter square and area of the conductor is 2.02 millimeter so space factor kf equal to 0.75 so number of turns now in field winding can be calculated kf hf in df upon smaller capital f putting value it comes around 2000 and resistance of e square rf equal to tf rho lmt upon ff it comes 14.9 ohm now field current is if equal to ef upon ef upon if so it comes 3.35 ampere and field mf provided is atfl 3.35 into 2000 6700 and the loss in each field value qf equal to if square rf comes 162.7 watt now cooling surface of each coil is 2 lmt hf plus tf so it comes 0.25 millimeter square and cooling coefficient for fill winding is 0 0.16 divided by 0 0.1 bp so it comes 0 0.05 and temperature is lost in each field coil into cooling coefficient by cooling surface so putting value comes 32.5 celsius and this is within the limit now coming to the commutator diameter calculator earlier dc equal to 0 0.23 meter and peripheral speed is equal to 10.8 millimeter per second now commuter width is 4.8 millimeter the number of commuter segment 150 and armature current is i equal to 355 plus 3.55 that comes 358.8 ampere let's say generator the current per brush is 2 into 358.5 by 4 that is 179.4 ampere and selecting current density in the brush point mm. so now current in each brush is 70 centimeter in four brushes so typically I mean calculating the current in each brush 44.4 ampere so area of the brush is your 44.1 448 millimeter square so it comes 448 millimeter square is the area of the brush now brush should cover at least 2.5 segment so the thickness of the brush is 4.8 into 2.5 that 12 mil 12 millimeter so width of the brush is now area divided by this width so it comes 37 mm and area of brush used is 448 mm square the area of the brush in each arm is AP into 4 into AP that comes 1792 millimeter square. Now 
providing 5 mm clearance between the brushes and 20 mm for shagging the play. So, length of commentary is L c equal to n b into w b plus c b into c 1 plus c 2. Putting value it comes 187.2 mm and L c is 0 0.187 mm. Taking 20 mm for the rider overall length of the commentary can be calculated now. That is a putting a value of this L c plus typically the rider. So, it comes 0 0.207 meter. So, brush contact drop is taken 1 volt per brush. So, brush contact loss is 2 into 1 3. It comes 7, 17 watt and selecting the brush pressure 20 kilo Newton per meter square. So, coefficient of friction 0.16. So, brush friction loss comes rho P B P A B B C putting value it comes 247.4 watt and taking a loss at commutator that is 17. 717 plus 247 that comes 964 watt and commuter cooling surface is 5 dc into lc that comes 0 putting value 0 0.137 meter square and cooling coefficient for commuter is 0 0.025 divided by 1.1 into vc putting value comes 0 0.0125 now temperature is in commuter total loss into cooling surface in uh, cooling coefficient to divide by cooling surface to so putting value comes 87 degree celsius now coming to interpole design, the length of air gap, huge interpole de, sigma equal to 1.3 sigma that is uh, putting a value 6.89 millimeter and width of the interpole is 1.5 times slot width, so it comes 43.6 millimeter. So with these details, the specific permeans are estimated for slot to total with two top and overhang. The total permeans is of 10 is lambda equal to 3.26 into 10 power minus 6. Now, time for commutation now is 2.23 into 10 power minus 3 second. So, average reactance of the coil ER equal to 2 Tc square LM YZ upon Tc into mu into lambda that comes 1.05 volt. So, maximum reactance is taken as 1.35 volt. Right? So, maximum frequency under the interpol is BMI equal to 1.35 divided by 0.19 to 15 that comes 0 0.47 Weber per meter square. So, since the air gap length in more than the interpole, so the gap contraction factor of interpole will be less than 1.2. So, taking contraction factor KCI equal to 1.15. Now, ATI comes 800,000 BMI KCI sigma plus IZ Z by 2P, putting the value it comes 10,359. Now, coming to number of tons in each interpole, this ATI upon typically the your current that comes 28. So, now with the current density 2.24 ampere per meter, the sectional area of the winding can be calculated. The sectional area 360 by 2.4, it comes down 60 millimeter square. Now, coming to copper losses, armature copper loss is 500, 5000 watt, which we calculated earlier, and copper loss in field winding we already calculated that comes typically 652 watt. So, interpol copper loss 830 watt, and brush contact loss we calculated 317 watt. So, total copper loss is plus brush contact, it comes 7. 1204 watt. Now, average width is 5D minus HS1 HS into BS, so it comes like 11.3 millimeter and width of the armature teeth, I mean, weight of the armature teeth can be calculated from all these dimensions and the density and comes 20.1 kg. Now, specific iron loss in teeth, the function of this 0 0.06 BM square plus 0 0.008 BF square T square BM square and putting value it comes 14.1 watts per kg. So, to iron loss in teeth is weight multiplied this watt loss per gauge, it comes to 83.4 watt and weight of armage corrosion is putting this value to it comes 76 kg and now specific core loss for this we calculate it comes 3.6 watt per gauge, so total iron loss in armage core is 73.6 watt, so total iron loss is sum of these two, so it comes 556 watt. So, now brush friction loss is 247 watt. We calculated earlier peripheral speed is of armature is 17.8 mm. So, bearing friction and what is loss taking a friction 0.4 percent of the machine. So, bearing friction comes 320 watt. So, total friction and windage loss is now 567 watt. And total loss comes now the total copper loss plus contact loss, total iron loss plus friction loss it comes 8327 watt. And input comes now 80,000 plus 8327. So, 82.327 kilowatt. Now, efficiency is the output of one input value it comes to 90.6 percent. Now, temperature rise outside cylindrical surface of armature is pi into D 12, so it comes 0.22 and cooling coefficient 0 0.03 1 plus 0.1 BP, so it comes 0 0.01 
and now loss dissipated from outer surface area is 0.22 divided by 0, 22 watt per centimeter. So inner surface is of ID I into L, so it is from 0 0.107 meter square and peripheral speed of inner portion pi di into n that comes 8.47 meter square so cooling coefficient comes 0 0.03 1 point 0.1284 so it comes 0 0.016 so loss dissipated from inner surface comes 0 0.17 divided by 0 0.006 6.6 watt per meter centimeter square now cooling surface from duct and two side of it comes 3 into pi upon 4 d square minus di square and putting value it comes 0 0.26 meter square now when Velocity in air in ducts is 0.1 into peripheral speed, 1.78 meter square, and cooling coefficient is putting with the peripheral speed is from 0 0.056. Loss in duct and endings comes from this cooling coefficient and typical parent, so it comes 4.6 watt per meter square. So total loss dissipated power measure 22.6.6.4.6, that comes 32, 33.2 watt per Celsius. To copper loss. In active portion of armature winding is considered temperature rise. So total loss is better to copper loss plus iron loss. So putting the value, it comes like 2152 watt. And now temperature rise loss divided by total dissipated. So it's a putting value this loss divided by that cooling. So it comes 64.8 Celsius. Now coming to the data sheet, specific loading 0.51 Tesla, electric loading 34,000 ampere per meter, output coefficient 775.96. And rating is 80 kilowatt voltage 250 volt speed 900 rpm rms current 36.4 and current per path is 180.2 watt and diameter comes like a 0.38 length comes 0.19 meter and peripheral speed 17.8 pole pitch 0.29 pole arc 0.19 gross iron length 0.18 meter is actual iron length 0.16 meter frequency of flux reversal 30 hertz and line current 355 ampere number of ventilating that one and now typically type of binding simplex pair binding number of conductor 328 number of slot 41 number of coils 82 slot pitch 0 0.029 meter width of the slot 15.54 millimeter height of the slot 831 millimeter current per slot 1441 ampere air gap length 5.3 millimeter and air mature mf per pole is 7047 ampere now inner diameter of armature code di equal to 0.184 meter mean length of armature lmt 1.19 meter armature couple loss 5 watt armature temperature is 64.8 uh, celsius now field system pole body bp equal to 0.129 meter hf is 0.14 hp 0.17 and df 40 millimeter hi 62.5 millimeter dy 0.85 meter ATT 5441 ATF full load MF 6457 ampere and meter length of field coil is 0.718 external area of field conductor 1.96 millimeter number of field turns 2000 and temperature IJ field running 30.5 Celsius. Now coming to commuter diameter of commutator DC equal to 0.23 meter commuter peripheral speed 10.8 meter per second commuter is 0.4.8 millimeter commuter segment 150 Current per brush 170.19.4 ampere, area of brush AB 1792 millimeter square, length of a commutator LC equal to 0 0.187 meter, total loss at commuter 964 watt, and temperature rise in commuter 87 degrees Celsius. Now coming to interpole, the length of the air gap under interpole is 6.89 millimeter, width of the interpole 43.6 millimeter. And number of tons on interval 28. Now coming to evidence, total copper loss 6552, plus contact loss 652, iron loss 556, and total friction loss 556. So the total loss is 8327 watt. Input is output is 50 kilowatt. So efficiency comes 90.6 percent. Now coming to complete DC machine design case study 2 analytically. Design a separately actuated industrial motor of 240 volt, 4 pole, 75 kilowatt continuous rating, duty cycle S1, 1000 rpm, the screen provided protected, class B insulation. The machine is built into stand of frame with a soft height of 4, 400 millimeter, and the motor is supplied power from thyristor bridge rectifier and consider the suitable data re if required. So now coming to calculation of as a solution of calculation of main dimension of the state of frame. 
so rated output power 75 kilowatt so speed is 1000 upon 60 that is 16 16.67 revolution per second considering the efficiency of 0.92 the power develop is p equal to 1 plus 2 eta upon 3 eta into p it becomes 77.2 kilowatt now the specific loading in the machine b average is 0.5 tesla is equal to 35000 so output coefficient c0 is pi square b average is into 10 power 3 it comes 172.7 so d square l comes p a upon c0 n that comes to 26.8 into 10 power minus 3 meter cube so now coming to main dimension frame the cross section of pole or pole face will be at least square in order to have saving in the copper conductor used for the field coil so for a square pole l equal to psi into t that is pi t upon tau into that is psi upon pi d upon p so it comes psi we take the polar pole which is 0.67 the l comes 0.67 pi d upon 4 that comes 0.526 d and putting a value of course in this so d comes 0.37 meter and l comes putting value from this l comes 0.166 meter so hence the main dimension comes t equal to 0.4 meter a 400 millimeter and L1 0.166 that is a 166 millimeter and tau is pi d upon p that comes 0.34 meter and b polar comes 0.67 into this tau so it comes by 0.21 meter now coming peripheral speed of the armature v equal to pi d n that comes 21.20 meter per meter per second so length of the core is 0.17 meter and therefore the one radial band glass of 10 millimeter is used so land R and length is your L equal to 0.9 into L into 1 into the duct width so that comes 0 0.14 meter, 4 meter and the frequency of reversal is Fpn upon by 2 bring value it comes 33.34 hertz and now thickness of laminations used for machine is 0.35 mm now the terminal voltage 240 volt the line currents I1 equal to P upon N into V it upon V that comes 340 ampere and field current IF is 1.2 times of line current, it comes 4 ampere. Interpol voltage drop 4.7 of VT that comes 11.3 volt. RMC current I equal to IL minus IF that comes 296 ampere. And generated in India V minus IR that comes 228.7 volt. Now coming to armature design, so type of winding. Since the armature current is less than 400 ampere, the simplex way winding is used for the machine. So number of parallel paths are 2. So current parallel path is I upon uh, typically z equal to i upon parallel path that is 168 ampere the number of conductors flux per pole is putting value it comes 26.7 into 10 power minus 3 Weber and number of armature conductors z equal to putting value of all it comes 257 so num number of slots comes pi d upon 35 it comes 36 and putting another value it comes 50 so in order to have power commutation conditions, the number of slots per pole should lie between 9 to 16. So therefore, number of slots range 36 to 36 to 64. So for simplex winding, the number of slots should not be multiple of pole pairs. So hence the number of slots is an odd integer, and the number of slots per pole arc should be multiple of pole pairs in the simplex way winding. Therefore, only one one three five pole side per layer, or two four six pole side per slot should be used. So number of armature slot 45 and the coil side is 6 u equal to 6 so single turn coil if it is used results in a suitable winding of the machine so number of coils equal c equal to half us that is 0.5 into 6 to so 135 and total of armature conductor huge actually it's a z equal to into 1 into 130 that 270 thus there is only a small difference between the number of conductor calculated and actually used so number of conductor per slot z is equal to 275 45 that's 6 a slot pitch pi d upon this number of slot that's come 28 millimeters and modify flux per pole is that putting away modify value 25.4 into 10 power minus 3 weber and take taking a typically specific loading use b average equal to pi upon toil comes 0.47 tesla and electrical loading ij upon pi d that comes 36100 ampere meter now back pitch for the winding design yb is 2c upon p plus minus k so it comes 67 67 and 69 for simplex winding commuter pitch will be 2c plus minus 1 by p it comes 67 68 so taking a yc equal to 67 total pitch winding is y equal to 2yc 134 so front pitch comes yf y minus yb 
67. Now coming to armature design, so length of the air gap that is armature M per pole 80 G, 80 A comes 55,670 ampere and number of MF required air gap 0.6 times. So, 80 G is 0.6 into this, so it comes 30,400, 3,400 ampere and maximum flux density in the air gap be G equal to B average upon psi, so it comes 0.171 Tesla. Taking a kg equal to 0.15, so LG comes 80 G upon 800,000 BG kg, it comes 5.2 into 2 power minus 3 meter or 5.3 million millimeter. 5.2 millimeter. So, flux armature for 5 is equal to 5 upon 2, it comes 12.7 10 power minus 3 vapor per meter square and a flux density of 1 Tesla is used in armature core. The area of the core is putting a value, it comes 10.58 into m minus 3 meter square. And depth of the armature core DC equal to AC upon LI, it comes 0 0.0735 meter or DC equal to 75 millimeter. Now, coming to the actual area of the armature core is AC, it comes 10.8 10 power minus 3 meter square. And actual flux density in armature core is BC equal to 12. So it comes 1.18 Tesla. And internal diameter of armature DI minus D minus 2 DS plus DC, it comes 190 millimeter. Now flux per in the pole body is 5P, just putting the contact 1.14 the ligature. So it comes to 29.2 10 power minus 3 Weber. And flux density in the pole body is considered 1.5 Tesla. So actual area of the pole body is AP equal to typically this divided by flux density. It comes typically 19.47, 10 power minus 3 meter square. The axial length of the pole body is equal to step length, that LP equal to 0.17 meter. The width of the pole body is BP equal to AP upon LP, so it comes 0 0.127 meter. And flux in EOP is come 5 upon 5, 5P equal to 5 upon 2, that 12.7 into 10 power minus 3 Weber. And flux density yoke is 1.5 Tesla. The actual area, actual area of the yoke is JY equal to BY upon. 5y upon by it comes 8.47 10 to the power minus 3 meter square and depth of the yogi is dy equal to ay upon ly so it comes 0 0.0554 meter or dc equal to 55 millimeter now the outside diameter of yoke is dy equal to d plus 2 lg plus hpl plus dy putting a value it comes 800 millimeter now coming to design of field winding the voltage across the sun field winding to 40 volt and 20 percent of this voltage gap between reserve for speed control so, four field coils are connected in series. So, volt per coil is Vf equal to 40 minus 0.2 into 40 by 4. That comes 48 volt. Now, M4 each coil is ATFL equal to 5060. The height of the coil is HF equal to 108 millimeter. Depth of the coil is DF equal to 110 millimeter. And axial length LP equal to 1700 millimeter. Width of the pole body BP equal to 177 millimeter. The mean conductor temperature assumed to be 75 degree and the distributivity of the Copper is 0 0.021 ohm meter per millimeter square. So, length of the internal LMT putting the value comes 0 0.77 meter. And now, area of the conductor AF equal to ATFL rho into LMT by V, it comes 1.71 millimeter square. So, nearest area is of the conductor available is 1.77 millimeter square. So, now space factor is SF equal to 0.75 D upon D1 square. So, it comes 0 0.67. 676 and TF now comes putting value, it comes 8.890 tons. Now, resistance of each coil RF from the tons we can calculate by the distributive end. So, it comes 17.4 ohm. And now, field current is 48 by this resistance, 2.76 ampere. And the field MF is now ATF field. Putting value, it comes 5210 ampere. And loss in the field coil is I, I square this RF, that is 132.5 watt. Now, cooling surface is equal to 2 into pi D plus. Pi, so it comes 0 0.24 meter square. Cooling coefficient C equal to 0 0.16 divided by 1.1. It comes 0 0.52. So theta comes W into C by S. Putting value, it comes 28.7 degrees Celsius. Now coming to commutator, the diameter of commutator DC equal to 0.26 meter. Peripheral speed 113.6 millimeter per second. And number of brush segments C135. And pitch of the segment BC equal to 6.05 meter. So now coming to the brushes, armature current is I equal to IL minus IF, so it comes 337 ampere and brush per arm is 2 into 330 by 4, so it comes 168.5 ampere. Current density in the brush is 110 power minus 3 ampere per, so and the brush current should not be more than 30, 70 ampere, so 4 brushes are huge. So now the current per brush is 42.1 ampere. Now area of the brush comes AP equal to current divided by this density, it comes 421 millimeter square. 
तो द ब्रश शुड कवर एटलीस्ट टू पॉइंट फाइव सेगमेंट तो टीपी कम्स टू पॉइंट फाइव दिस फिफ्टीन मिलीमीटर तो विथ ऑफ द ब्रश इज नाउ एरिया अपॉन दिस विथ दैट एटी एट मिलीमीटर एंड एरिया ऑफ द ब्रश यूज इज दिस फोर ट्वेंटी मिलीमीटर स्क्वायर तो एरिया ऑफ द ब्रश इन ईच आर मीट फोर टाइम्स तो इट कम्स वन पॉइंट सिक्स एट टेन पॉवर माइनस थ्री मीटर स्क्वायर अलॉन्ग फोर मिलीमीटर क्लियरेंस बिटवीन द ब्रशेज तो वी गेट ए टेन मिलीमीटर फॉर स्टैगरिंग एंड टेन मिलीमीटर फॉर एंड प्ले तो लेंथ ऑफ द कंप्यूटर एक्सर Either LC putting a value, it comes 166 millimeter, and allowing 20 millimeter for either the overall length of computer is 160 plus 20 that comes 188 180 millimeter. So now brush contact drop is assumed to one volt per brush. So the brush loss is PB equal to two into that. So it comes 670 watt. So brush pressure is 20 k kilo newton meter is per meter square and coefficient friction is 1.15. So brush loss is become PB equal to putting value it comes 270 watt. And total computer loss is now PV as PVC that comes 940 watt. Now barrel surface for computer S into pi dl is a 0.13 meter square and cool coefficient is equal to 0.16 divided by 0.1 plus 0.1 V. It comes 0.0106. And temperature is now theta equal to W into C upon S. It comes 66.4 Celsius. Now coming to width of the computer zone, so W C equal to U by 2 minus alpha upon P to be C. Plus TB minus TI D upon DC putting value it comes 46.3 millimeter square. The length of the air gap under the interpole is generally one to two times the length of air gap under the main pole. So assuming the length of air gap under interpole LGI equal 1.2, that's six millimeter square. And specific permeance lambda equal to me zero L H1 upon three Vs plus H2 Ws plus H3 Ws plus W zero for H4 upon W zero is come 1.37 tenth power minus six. So to tooth permeance comes lambda is mu zero. WIP upon one, so it comes one point seven six ten power minus six. And now coming to overhang, I'll see the putting zero point length over that's zero point zero nine five meter length of overhang in one coil is LCO equal to one two T by two square plus LC square. It comes zero point one eight four meter and peripheral periphery of one coil side BC. The putting of this it comes forty two point four millimeter square. And now overhang permeance is lambda zero. I mean putting value in Relation is come 0.22 10 power minus 6. So total permeance is here now lambda equal to 3.34 10 power minus 6. Now coming to the MF required for air gap ATG I equal to under the interval 8 800 thousand into this area that comes to 0.60 ampere and armature MF per pole is 88. It comes 5690 ampere. MF required for interval is sum of both so 7750 ampere. The so number of turns per interval is Ti equal to Mf divided by total current is 23. Taking the current density 2.5 per interval, the area at one interval is Ti equal to 134.8 millimeter square. Now coming to the losses and efficiency, friction windage loss here is brush friction loss 270 watt. Friction losses at bearing and windage 0.4 of the output power, so it comes 300 watt. Total friction windage loss now is 5 270 plus 300, 570 watt. Now RN loss is By calculating the weight, so it comes mean width of the teeth is pi d minus d s upon s minus w s. So it comes zero point zero one two eight liter. So width of the weight of the armature teeth, the number of armature teeth into the L into I. So it comes twenty into density twenty point nine kg. So plug density one third height of the root is one point nine three tesla. So now specific iron loss from this formula comes on the eleven point five watt per kg, and iron loss in teeth now comes from this two zero two six zero watt. Now coming to iron loss in the armature core, we can calculate the weight of armature core by d into L into density. It comes 73 kg, and specific loss from this relation comes 3.5 watt per kg. So total iron loss in core comes 256 watt. Total iron loss comes 516 watt. So along 20% additional loss for people in the motor supply. So total iron loss comes 620 watt. Now coming to copper loss in armature. Armature resistance 0.031. Ohm we calculated earlier, so copper loss is I square R, so it comes three five two zero watt. So copper fill sun fill loss is typically two fourteen to two point seven six. That comes six sixty watt, and copper loss in the pole is I square R, that's eight nine zero watt. So brush contact loss three into twenty nine six sixty watt. So total loss comes by putting all these losses six nine three zero watt. Input power is typically now seventy five kilowatt plus these losses, that is eight one eighty one kilowatt nine eighty point. 93 kilowatt. So efficiency is output divided by input. It comes 0.915 or 91.5 percent.
Now for temperature rise of armature, outside cylindrical surface is surface is pi d in 12, that is 0.214 meter square cooling coefficient c equal to 0 0.03, 0 0.1, from 0 0.0097. So, loss dissipation is as upon c, it comes 22.1 watt per Celsius. Cylindrical surface again s equal to pi d l, that is 0 0.101 meter square cooling coefficient c equal to 0 0.031 plus 0.1 va, 0 .0, it comes 0 0.015. So, now loss dissipation as upon C, it comes 6.7 watt per degree Celsius. Now, cooling surface area of one duct and two and surfaces S equal to 3 upon pi d, d minus this. So, it comes 0 0.292 meter square and velocity at air duct is 0.1 into 21, 2.1 meter per second. So, cooling coefficient comes C on 0 0.071. So, loss dissipation now as upon C, it comes 4.1 watt per degree Celsius. So, total loss dissipation summing all three comes 32.9 watt per Celsius. Total loss dissipation in copper loss active person plus iron loss. So, it comes say, for 1600 watt and temperature rise comes 1600 and then cooling total loss dissipation it comes 49 degree Celsius. Now, coming to design workflow of DC motor design. So, before understanding the computer design aspect after the aspect of the design, the designer needs to break the design process into multiple sub parts and these parts will be referred as a sub, sub routine and can be sold independently or in main design workflow. The following section details the fee of these sub routine involved in the design of DC machine which can be further used in computer design of process. So, you can see how the DC motor design process is there with the start, sub process, first sub process then sub routine 1 and 2, sub process 2 the process then subroutine 1 or 2 and then decision and end that is a of course design workflow involving sub process and subroutine. So, now coming to as a design workflow with example a scope of design comes first power part to part or in megawatt operating voltage rated maximum uh, rating and maximum speed and torque operating efficiency duty cycle type of bond field or pumping net then armature design number of slot winding part turn or gauge field design design winding turns and gauge, sentence series and pumping the design height type of material, computer design number of segment, dimension insulation use, air gap dimension and voltage limit for winding and current limit for winding. Now, if coming to now interval design width and rectangular reactance voltage, then insulation requirement, winding layer insulation, insulation between windings, slot insulation, commuter insulation. Now, type of winding, type of winding sequence may wave lay pitch, usually full pitch and enclosure frame type and type of cooling and soft design, magnetic or non-magnetic soft. Now, stamping dimension and thickness like maybe 0 0.2 to 0.6 millimeter and stack material maybe M steel or cobalt steel, then losses efficiency, then flux density, the design size composition, then armature with the core and slot and field pole, either permanent design, then air gap design and mode of design like computer design, synthesis or automatic or manual design like analysis or side direction like hybrid method. So now, maybe some of the variables for the design uh, in DC motor can be like average flux density in Tesla, width of the pole body, height of the pole interpole winding, current density in the field winding, armature diameter, armature diameter, length of armature core, width of the armature slot, depth of the armature slot, number of the armature slot, length of air gap under main pole. Now, length of air gap under interpole, length of armature core, depth of the field yoke, number of axial ventilating ducts, height per pole to width of pole winding and height of pumping that use, width pumping material use and cooling like gas, water or ventilation. Now, objective function in DC motor, those are the variables can be minimize the overall cost including the cost of material and labor and losses or maximize the efficiency power output could be single objective or multiple objective function and DC motor design is really constraint design problem with the constraint. So, typically constraint, some of the constraint DC machine could be maximum flux density in the air gap, armature teeth and the pole body, peripheral speed of armature, ratio of armature slot to width and teeth and commuter pitch and maximum reactance voltage and maximum voltage between the commuter segment and pulse duty factors of armature current and ratio of the torque of armature moment of inertia. Then minimum clearance between the main field pole tip of interpole winding, tip of pole shoe and interpole windings, then magnet thickness, volume and its plug density, also the associated cost and losses, losses in the motor body, efficiency of motor, temperature rise and armature and commutator, 
and typically this is the workflow to start as a like design with the specification parameters and constraints choice of design parameters estimation of main dimension but if not then you have to change you can go back uh, if yes then frame size and winding design then magnetic circuit design design of inter commutator and interpoles magnetic circuit design design of commutator interpole is design optimum no go back again for iterative process if yes calculate the losses efficiency and then performance calculation if performance satisfactory if no go back if yes then print design data and install now coming to the design workflow as a sequential step for design of each part calculate the coefficient main dimensions and armature like dl and flux per pole checking the peripheral velocity and volt per volts between the commuter segment calculate number of slots size of the slot conductor size checking check current density current volume slot balance calculate tooth flux density height of the core width of the iron iron losses and temperature rise calculate dimension of pole field coil yoke and ampere turns calculate copper size uh, then number of turns for sun and series field determine the diameter of commuter and number of size and brushes check the peripheral velocity and gap between the arm brushes calculate the dimension of interpole and interval winding calculate total loss efficiency and total weight in kg per kilowatt now this is typically workflow again for design of stator with the start we give the input as a power rating voltage number of poles we can see speed efficiency power the average and rotary speed then calculate the kva then calculate the output coefficient calculate the speed and then dl if yes peripheral speed otherwise increase the amount according to modify and design dimensions then winding field winding design conductor size calculate number of stress slot stress conductor determine the air gap length and print the result for stress design of it similarly you can have a subroutine calculate of main dimension to start with variable and constraint calculate frequency check the frequency it is between the two constraints minimum and maximum then calculate the power develop uh, then the motor losses then speed then output coefficient then separate out d and l then calculate the d and l and if you yes, otherwise you stop simply calculate the number of slot so starting with the pi d upon with the minimum x select like the slot coils now conductors so in should be integer then with practical constraint slot pitch and then b average and ampere conductor then design of yoke calculate the flux then area depth and select the value and then n then the winding layout with the typically back pitch then the front pitch and total pitch then calculation of air gap calculate the mf then total air gap mf flux density and the length of air gap then similarly flow chart of rotor design so typically go to the complete dimension parameter find out the main dimension then air gap uh, dimensions then the determine the dimension of pole copper size calculate the commuter brush size and select the stator t then typically go to the calculate of interval winding then the temperature rise and temperature within the other way go on modifying and then the print and cal typically calculation of armature winding starting power voltage efficiency and speed calculate the current select the type of winding depending on current select the type of number of parallel path then the flux and number of conductors could be of course integer and calculate of pole pole selection to so calculate flux per pole area of the pole length of the pole a cross i mean typically the uh, gross core length and the width of the pole similarly you can have a armature core which calculate the flux of armature core then area of the core depth of the core select the suitable value and area of the core then modify it flux density and then depth of the yoke similarly calculate the all the dimensions for the brushes starting armature current the brush current check brush current within limit if not then if yes then calculate the um, brush area then the width area brush then the width of the brush uh, then the area of the brush then modify this and area of the brush and then length of the brush commutator segment and then the total space riser and with the total length of the then similarly calculate the losses so you calculate the brush loss field loss calculate the total losses then the brush contact loss then coupling coefficient and temperature rise now coming to computer design of dc motor so kind of dc motor design is the different different variables and parameter are interrelated and the variables and performance of the machine have a nonlinear relation so manual design procedure of machine is time consuming so it needs more number 
more manpower and further accuracy level may be lower. The use of computer reduces the time and money used for the tedious and lengthy hand calculation. The advantage of computer a design of DC machines are the computer has a large memory, so it can store maximum data, tables, and other information required in the design. Computer can do the calculation in short period. It takes the less time to take the logical decision. The change in the large number of parameters can be modeled simultaneously using loops and computer design. And optimization of design can be also obtained by the computer. Hence, it reduces the cost of fabrication. As you studied and analysis, the approach of the design can be in like broadly classified into three categories analysis method and sense by given errors in, and by design of DC motor. It means the dimensioning the DC machine for a given specification. So, by design, mean synthesis while calculating performance for given geometry and call analysis to so design a synthesis uses analytical iteratively and analysis imply the mathematical model. So, coming to first analysis method for design, in this method the computer is used only for purpose of calculation or analysis and the, all the decisions are taken by manual design as shown in the flowchart. And in synthesis process, the logical decision are also taken by the computer. So, logical decision include the suitable change in parameters to achieve the design of and logical decision are considered as set of instructions as shown the process or in flow chart. Now, coming to the typical example main aspect covered in design optimization of DC machine. So, starting from design, then motor type, topology, then material, dimension material, electromagnetic structure, thermal, you know, typically inverter and control process design, and then provide the feasible design. Then go to the optimization, and of course, you have to use the model, then algorithms, and then the method and stage is equal. Now, coming to the analysis method, this is the typically the expression what we really given the relation in a form of formulas for calculation of main dimensions. These are for armature formula for armature design in a programming form as if with the sequence and then the number of slot selections and number of calculation ampere conductor cal armature winding calculation, then calculation of length, then calculation of flux density in the teeth. Then air gap design, pole selection, how we use the relation in sequence like I mean, these are the method, then the design of field winding, then yoke design, then design of the brushes, then calculation of losses and efficiency. Um, now coming to the computer design by synthesis process. Here we of course take a specification constant initial design. We go standard frame size and stepping, then design of stator winding, magnetic circuit, no load current, reactance and source current, performance calculation. Uh, so here we do the approach. Each to design programming is greatly affected by size and type of the machine. In this case, a small standard or semi standard machine, many of dimension and performance criteria are imposed by introduction manufacturing standard, reducing the number of variables and synthesis remainder the design becomes practicable. And the optimum design is generally based on minimized production cost, occasionally mass, and the marginal improvement in performance are so for large machine number of design variables is so great that the optimizing may vary with the application. So, the capitalized value of optimized cost item typically as a sub you know, or outweigh the increase in price. And again, the machine may be designed as per the expensive system in individual cost or less concerns than in performance. So, comprehensive synthesis program might take several many years to develop and could be restrictive and obstacles. And unless you synthesis combination may be the most practical approach with the synthesis routine dealing with the AG with the adjustment of interrelated dimension to meet particular item in specification and the analysis routine covering many design calculations like unbalanced magnetic magnetization inertia stress resistance and losses. So these are typically the workflow for the this computer design synthesis so going with the constraint then go to main dimension field and then with the armature design, computer design, interpol design plus selection and magnetic circuit calculation field circuits and series fields and field and performance calculation compared the space. Now, typically with the optimal design of DC machine with the example, this is a classical design approach. So, stage of classical design approach are shown here. Dimensioning and verification calculation are computerized, but the selection of loading stresses and the initial geometry still done by the designer. So, design specification are too restrictive. Finding a solution can be either tedious or even the specification configuration and lower cost or of performance may be obtained. And they typically how the optimal design really work with the starting with the specification, then electromagnetic like design, dimensioning, parameter competition, objective high calculation, then checking the verification if yes, then thermal verification, yes, then me mechanical verification, if yes, then objective 
whether minimum or not otherwise you go to iterative procedure and then conclude so this optimal design means the number of stages optimal design are shown in previous slide the optimal design specification contain in general minimum performance requirement and objective function the initial electromagnetic stresses and geometrical parameters are either specified by the designer or randomly generated through the dedicated routine within the specified domain and dimensioning and parameter calculation are done in classical design but the additionally the objective function is also calculated then the electromagnetic thermal and mechanical verification calculation are performed and for every performance index that is not suitable a penalty is added to the objective function so that that gen can be discarded if the penalty coefficient are high enough then the requirement will be satisfied in the final design solution so dc motor optimization can be classified as non linear inequality equality and in inequality constraint optimization in the area there are no algorithm or iterative scheme which guarantees the global optimum in our case is a minimum will be found so most of the algorithm proposed iterate in the literature converge to the local optimum with a varying degree of efficiency although the even this is not guarantee or one start iteration too far from the local optimum and some insight is therefore usually required to find a suitable starting point for iteration other past experience can serve as a guide following the two sided optimization along with their application use for dc motor design so these are typically non linear optimization problem like sequential and confirmation minimization like minimization effects where effects is the objective function which may be the minimizing means you can reduce the cost or you can reduce the weight or volume i mean for this computer design so non linear programming usually involve minimizing the or maximizing the objective function subject to boundary constraint bound constraint linear constraint and non linear constraint where the constraint can be inequality or equality constraint. example problem in engineering include the analyzing design trade off selecting optimal design computing optimal trajectory and portfolio optimization and model calibration computation so on constraint only a programming in mathematical problem finding x that is a variable and have a local minima to non linear function objective function as in where there is no restriction on this this algorithm used for non linear programming as a sequential and constraint minimization technique and with the example so these are typical example of optimize of dc machine of four pole as you can see the section so here the design variables what they use average flux density width of the pole body height of the interpole current density in field winding armature diameter length of the armature core width of the armature depth of the armature slot number of the armature slot lambda of the arm under main poles length of air gap in the pole depth of the depth of the field yoke number of ventilating ducts height pull and poles and two factor torque penetration torque and torque armature penetration are the primary indices for overall volume and diameter the objective function is fx over ci gi in plus gc to where gi is the cost of stamping and winding as uh, the weight in stamping expressed in terms of and constant are maximum flux density air gap armature teeth and pole body peripheral speed rest of armature slot and computer pitch maximum maximum reactance voltage and maximum, maximum voltage between computer segment and positivity factor of armature segment rest of torque minimum clearances between the main pole tip pole tip pole also an interpole winding a losses in the motor body efficiency of motor temperature is over much in computer now as optimal design a mathematical model of the non linear programming is formulated with objective function and constraint in terms of design variable the so general optimization program include the main program together with the relevant functions like armature lab winding main field interpole compositing winding magnetization characteristic chart coefficient analysis of current peak next rms and harmonic component i square loss in different winding history and recurrent loss and mathematical model converted into sequence of unconstrained minimization problem with normal constraint with jagwell extremely apparently function or any an objective function with a starting vector in and penalty parameter with minimization is carried with the powell sequential transformation method and powell pattern search method using conjugate direction there are plenty of non linear optimization method which can be applied for optimum, finding optimal design now another method is design of experiment so design of Optimization DC motor is usually formulated problem formulation like uh, design of experiment are a unique technique which are applied for establishing relation between the input and output. This relation could be used for optimization and if electrical means the designer interest is in performance and reduction of that torque. And the, of course, this the from this publication one can follow the more in detail about this technique. So now this the optimization of DC machine is usually formulated typically with the as a material selection like a soft material. then or design this can be find out typically using finite element after getting the final design to validation and you can go through the typically of the only fish selector dimension to confirm from the this ipm method 
uh, for different parts like of the this DC machine. And then typically of similarly you can have a design methodology for PM DC motor, permanent burst DC motor. I mean and with the proper reference is given typically here as a problem formulation. As you can see the main dimensions of this motor with the as an example in this particular conference paper and then the methodology of how the different characteristics are obtained for this motor and comparison of motor characteristics and performance typically by hand calculation and by design calculation. And then of course comparison of performance typically for this motor used for drill tool maybe. And then the fan load and other motor examples like typically. So they have considered many characteristics and many examples for different kind of motors used before. Now coming to as a tutorial of a motor design where algorithm computer program to maximum output for a frame size of 2 meter, the maximum frequency loading of 50,000 generator MF. The typically the program how you can use the typically calculation with these relations. And the second example of computer design with these formulation. And of course the example third similarly you can do typically many tutorial problems in the same way. Now coming to objective function, use of interpol in DC machine is used for avoiding the sparking. MF interpol is proportional to armature current. And DC machine the computer diameter is closest between the 0.62.8 and number of poles in DC machine is increased. Typically cause all effect and the diameter of machine chosen between the pole body, typically peripheral speed and pole pitch. And larger code is preferred in DC machine with the taking B and C. So air gap in the flux density compared to is the large because you give the in the machine the air gap depends on the typically on reactance voltage. And design of armature height frequency depends on reduction of heat and duplex winding the number of parallel path is certainly 4. Then the typically the cost will increase if large number of slots are used and peripheral speed of the motor should not exceed the 30 meter per second. Probably winding is used in this machine should be simplex plug and the width of the carbon process will be between 2 to 3 kilometer segment. The major reason for wearing the brushes is to either all these reasons and the commuter will not be less than 4 millimeter higher commuter peripheral speed cause a commuter difficulty and strength buses required to avoid the ridges of to have a minimum commuter. Now coming to subjective problems, what are the conditions in deciding the choices of slots of DC machine? It will be less than 1500 ampere conductor and number of slots will be for the 9 in order to avoid the sparking and slot this will be between 25 to 35 ohm. How is the choice of lower value of air gap flux density affect the design? Selecting lower value of flux density, armature dimensions or length are increased, causing the rise in cost due to increase in, but it leads to reduction in armature losses. Mention the need of slot insulation, the conductors are placed in slots. So as the rotate, the number of conductors are due to the vibration. This may cause the short circuit in the conductor, so and the slot insulation is avoided. Mention the effect due to use of slot. With increase in the slot, the following increase in eddy current loss, increase in specific permeance, increase in reaction voltage, and fabrication of lamination with the now, which coil is used to determine the width of the coil either? I mentioned the back pitch and winding is used to this. Discuss about the slot, the split coil in this and split coil which will have a more than the two coils. And what are the difference between the simple X and simple X one? Simple X lab winding forms a single go circuit and the parallel path and equal to the number of poles. And here the black lab winding is used to circuit and parallel path in by winding. What are the factors on which the brush friction loss depends? The factor depends on coefficient of friction, brush and commuter, peripheral speed and total contact area of the brush and brush pressure and contact. These are the some of the references which I have used for preparing this material. You can refer in more detail from these references. Thank you very much.